Well, hi, welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. I'm your host for this. Thank you very much for clicking on the link and joining us. We've been talking about Chess Base 10 and the activated version of Chess Base Lite. There's two versions, uh, versions of Chess Base Lite, of course. There's the freebie you can download and use in a limited way forever, or there's the activated version where you can buy an activation key and activate it and use it forever with some additional features, among them being the ability to save and replace games. Now, we looked last week in the workshop on how to enter a game, you know, put in the moves, and save it. I mentioned at the end that there is a big difference between saving and replacing games, and we're going to look at that in this week's workshop. Um, save game, basically, I'll give you the rundown real quick, which is that save game saves a second copy of the game either into that database or, or into a separate database, your choice. Replace game replaces the game that you're working in with the new version in which you've made some changes. Now, I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. We have a database here called workshop vid database just a, a work database that I use for these presentations and I took out the games that we put in previously and I have now put in all the games of the London 1851 tournament if we scroll down we have game number one highlighted right here but if we scroll down to the bottom we'll notice that there are 248 games in this database that's important keep that in the back of your mind because that will become important later in this presentation Notice that we have a column here that says VCS. That stands for Variations, Commentary, Symbols. What that means is that if a game has commentary that someone has put into it, whether it's in the form of variations, the written word, symbols, colored arrows and squares, all different kinds of special visual annotations that you can use in chess base, as well as multimedia. If somebody has done voice commentary in a game, that will appear in this column. We can see there are two games here that have commentary, one by Robert Hoovner and Blackburn's old uh, commentary from way back when is in here as well. We're going to open up the first game. It's uh, Lionel Kaczorowski against Henry Buckle. And we're going to play through a couple of moves, and we see that uh, Buckle chooses to play the Sicilian, and Kaczorowski plays this, which is interesting. You don't see that a lot anymore. It's more frequent to see other moves, like, for example, Knight coming here, of course. We'll put that in as a new variation. We'll take that move back. C3 Sicilian uh, gaining a lot of traction here in the last oh decade, decade and a half. It's become very popular on the club level. That's another idea. Or if you're me, you just go for the immediate throw the pawn away, um, trying for a Smith Moore gambit. Um, so we've put in three variations at this point. We'll go back to what uh, Kaczorowski actually played, and we'll play through some additional moves here. And here we uh, we go for the Fienkett with the bishop. So let's say we're annotating this game, and we want our reader to uh, understand that the idea is the Fienkett of the bishop. So we'll put a arrow in. And um, I guess we'll just stop there. Now we have a choice of either saving the game or replacing the game. We go to the File menu, and we have three commands that allow us to save the game. One, and we'll look at two of them uh, initially. Save into, and it always has the default, is the, the database that you currently have a game list open for. So we had opened up my Workshop Vid database, so that's what it's saying here. Save into Workshop Vid database. So let's go ahead and save it. All right, and see what happens. When you click on it, you wind up with the same header information. There's no reason to change the header information because it's still the same game. So we click OK. Then we close the game. And look what we have. We have up here Kaiserisky and Buckle with no commentary. Now we know dang good and well we just put a bunch of variations into that game. Well, what we did was you scroll the whole way down here. Remember, there were 248 games in the database. Well, guess what? Now there's a 249th. Kaiseritsky and Buckle with a very few variations in it. Oh, and look, it put my name in as a default since I, uh, since I annotated it. And if we open that up, we'll see there's the stuff that I put in there, the three variations, as well as my little colored arrow. Um, and if we scroll back up to the top, we'll notice... We click on game number one. There's no commentary here. So when you save a game, I opened up this game, put in a bunch of variations and stuff, and when I saved it, it put a second copy of the game down here at the bottom. 
That's what save game does. When you save instead of replace, it adds another copy of the game to the database. Now another way you can do this is, let's say I've put in these commentary items again, the three variations, and the colored arrow. We go to file, and we go to save game as. Sometimes you want to save a game into a different database. Let's say I'm working on a book about uh, mid-1800s chess and I want to save this game into my book but I don't want to I don't want to save it into the database it came out of if I go to save game as I get the Windows file select dialog which allows me to go to any drive and any folder on my computer and what I can do is use this to navigate to the folder that my book is in the database I'm putting together for a book I'm working on and save it into that database for example let's just say um, well, I had done a database on it called Advice for Beginners at one time. So let's say I wanted to save it in there. I could select it here, click Open. It should say Save, but if I click Open, it'll save this game into this database instead of the original database. So that's what Save does. Now, what does Replace do? Well, let's go back and find out. Let's go back to our very first game, which has no annotations, and we'll again put in the different variations that I had uh put in before and then we'll play through some extra moves and we'll put in our arrow for the bishop showing the bishop is going to be fianchettoed and then we'll put that in and we'll call attention to the fact that the bishop did get fianchettoed then we go here and buckle plays this Kaiserisky plays this and just for chuckles let's put in a comment that shows why he wouldn't have moved here well because he's gonna lose a tempo of course that's gonna allow the knight to come here and the knight takes and all this other stuff can happen but the idea is that the pawn is gonna kick the bishop bishop has to be moved again and uh, you lose a tempo if you don't come the whole way back here so that's what we're trying to get across to people and I could even type in a comment there to that effect we go to the file menu now and we select replace this time not save so let's select replace and we see the header information is the same don't need to change it as before so we click OK close the game and up here look now Kaiserisky buckle with a little lowercase v meaning that in replacing the game I open up game number one added some commentary did replace game and now game number one in the database contains our variations and our colored arrows and all the good stuff that we had put in. That's the difference between save game and replace game. Now I occasionally get an email from somebody that says, well that's not how Microsoft does it in their Office programs. Well, this isn't Microsoft Office. This is a, uh, a different kind of program. It does some of the same things, but it does have its own specialized terminology. So you do need to learn the terminology to effectively use the program. Um, Basically, Microsoft doesn't really allow you to save co additional copies of stuff. Not the last time I checked, anyway. I could be dead wrong. But typically, what it does is if you make alterations to a, a Word document and you save it, those changes are saved. That if you wanted to have a before and after copy, you would actually have to make a second copy of your document, make your changes, and then save that to preserve your original and then have your new one. This one you can do it right in the program. You don't have to leave the program to make extra copies of stuff. You can do it right in the program. Save game, as we said before, actually adds another copy of the game into a database, whereas replace replaces the same game, in this case game number one, with the variations and commentary. Now why would you want to save a game into the, you know, a second copy of the game into the same database? I've worked on a couple of books where we've done this, where you've had uh, a bunch of commented games and at the end of the database you want to have uh, as, as an appendix um, all the games of a tournament with no commentary or the other way around in this case we would start let's say we're working on a book where we, we want to have all the games of a database just as the raw game scores and then at the end we want to have some commented games so you would open this up you'd make your comments and you would use save game okay and then it would save it uh, to the end of the database by the way let's just for fun let me show you this I just open up game number one again let me show you how this works to reiterate this um, I open up game number one and I choose to save it into the same database click OK now close this go back down here and look what happens I now have 
two copies of Kaiserisky and Buckle at the end of the database. Save game always adds a game to the database, always taxing on at the end. Um, I've talked to players who are like correspondence players that they want to put in their correspondence analysis and then they want to save the analysis. So they click save game and they go, oh man, it put it, it added another game to the end of my database. I've got this huge database. I'm only playing six correspondence games and I've got this database of 145 games. I mean, how did this happen? Because what you want to do is if you don't want to tack another game onto the end of the database and keep making this database grow, use replace game to replace that game in the database with a new version that has your added commentary. Hopefully that distinction is clear to you now. If not, please go back and watch the video again and also feel free to, to write to me on message boards or email or what, however you want to get a hold of me, Carrier Pigeon, and I'll try to make it a little more clear. Also, since Chess Based Workshop used to be a written thing on the internet, used to be articles online, I know I've talked about this at least between four and a half dozen times over the years and if you hunt around for the old T notes or chess based workshop articles you'll find some uh, some more exposition on this but hopefully this video has made it clear if not go back and watch it again and maybe catching it the second time will make it more clear replace game if you open up game three in the database and add some comments and use replace game it will replace game three in the database with a new copy of game three uh, you know, basically overwrite game three with your changes is, is a short way to put it. Make your changes, click replace, it overwrites the game with the changes that you just made. Whereas if you click save game, whoops, need to go back and open that again. If you choose save game instead, it will add a new copy of the game to the end of the database, a second copy of it with the changes that you just made. Hopefully that is clear enough to you. If not, again, please go back and watch the video a second time or try to contact us and we'll try to make it a little more clear for you. Anyway, that's save and replace game. Very important to know the difference between the two. Next time around in Chess Base Workshop, we'll look at some other things, some other aspects of the Chess Base 10 program and Chess Base Lite. Until then, have fun.